ladies and gentlemen welcome back to tech showdown my name is kevin this is my co-host teddy and in this video which is just you know unscripted i'm just gonna speak my mind is about a question i get um every so often and it's people saying uh like hey love your videos whatever and i want to do what you do or i want to be a tech reviewer and how do i get into it now i'm still a small tech YouTuber by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a very small fish in a very large pond uh, However, I think that gives me the advantage of that I haven't been doing this as long so I can sort of give you guys the, the best advice about how to get into it Rather than say a big channel that started, you know, like six years ago and a lot of things might have changed between then and now So the first thing is sort of thinking up the concept for your channel now there's no shortage of tech review channels now on YouTube. I mean there's, there's plenty of them out there. So you need to think about how you're going to be different from everybody else. And not only that, but what kind of video style you want to do. And to answer the, the first one is look around and see if there's a gap. See if people aren't reviewing something that maybe you think would be quite interesting or doing it a different way and just look around and the best thing to do is think of something you would want to watch and then go and try find it and if you can't find it then go make that video as far as style goes i think this is a very personal thing but it, it again goes back to what do you like to watch what kind of style of video is really entertaining to you and then just try to emulate it and add your own kind of flavor to it so um, maybe take a few things from the way that channel is doing it that one that you're going to maybe take some inspiration from and then just change it up a little bit or try improve it in your own way or do it your own way so that's what I would say is the best way to go about uh, starting the, the tech channel in terms of a concept now once you've got that idea all good then you're going to need uh, some equipment in order to make the videos so you don't really need a super fancy setup at the start and also you probably don't want to invest too much into it in case it doesn't work out and then you're left with a lot of equipment that you're not going to really be using for anything. So I think one way uh, which is quite good and it is a little bit more on the basic side of things but people will forgive that if your content is interesting is go out and get yourself a a nice sort of like high quality webcam because you can always use it for other purposes after if you you know your tech channel doesn't work out so good like 1080p good quality webcam and maybe get yourself a desk light as well so you can have pointing your face if your room doesn't have good lighting and uh, and then make your main video with you talking sort of with your webcam you can have it on top of your laptop or something like that if you want or on top of your uh, rig and, and just have it like that and as far as your b-roll goes just use uh, your, if you have a smartphone with a good camera, you can just use that and you can get all your B-roll like that and it'll come out quite nicely. There's quite a few videos I've watched and, and I only pick it up because, you know, people have told me about it, but they actually, the B-roll in those videos has actually been shot by, uh, through a smartphone and, you know, most of the audience wouldn't have even known. So that's uh, probably a good basic way to set up. But if you have a camera already, then yeah, sure, go with that. Just just don't go too over the top too early on. Just make sure that your you know content is getting interest first, and then you can think about you know upgrading all your setup. Now the third thing you're obviously going to need is products to review. So if you're doing a tech channel, obviously you're going to need tech products, and you got to get them from somewhere. Now I have heard people like Linus say. Well, when you're starting out, you can just go buy the product from a shop, review it, and then return it. Um, now, often they will charge you a restocking fee, which is going to you know, take a bit of money away, although you will still get your refund back, but that's usually like, it's like a 10% restocking fee or something like that, which isn't good. But also, the retailers really don't like doing that and if you're going around different retailers unless you're going back to the same one doing it all the time in which case they probably figure out what you're doing and you know will be very unhappy with you but if you're going around lots of different retailers doing this they're gonna start to notice it and it'll kind of build you enemies early on in the industry and the retailers might not want to work with you in the future because of it so that's something I actually wouldn't recommend. 
technically it's legal but it's very unethical and i when he said that and i've talked to people in the industry about it they were like wow that is some terrible advice for someone so i would not uh, say to do that uh, at all what i would say to do instead is buy yourself some tech products that you're gonna buy yourself anyway say if you're, you're thinking oh i want a new gaming mouse then uh, find one that you think you can do a good review on and buy that one that you're gonna like anyways and um, and do a review on that so that's a good way to do it also once you get a few videos out and they can and people can see what you're making then go to a retailer and ask them for products if you've got nothing to show for it they're not going to be interested take it from me you have to have something to show for it and say hey I've got you know 100 subs now I've put out you know, a few videos and they got a little bit of interest uh, can you just give me something anything maybe something small that I can borrow and I'll, I'll bring it back to you guys uh, maybe something you've already got as an open box demo or something that's out in the shop as a demo I uh, can I just borrow that I'll do a review bring it back and then you can start building up your relationship with them that way so that's a good way to sort of move into it as well and of course then you can go from there if they really like it and they want to work with you in the future and that's pretty much the best way to get started I would say the other thing is if you're not very comfortable in front of the camera at first or you get you know you, you get stage fright or whatever it is or a very shy person then maybe start doing um, written reviews first because it'll help you get your template down for when you do your scripting for when you do your video reviews because it's pretty much the same thing the the scripts I write for my video reviews could also pretty much be used as a written review anyway um, so that's a good thing to do as well uh, maybe go on some a lot of tech forums have like a review section and just do some written reviews in there until you build up your confidence maybe in uh, how you're reviewing it and then you can transition then to going straight to the camera I personally didn't do that I just went straight to you know doing reviews on camera so you don't necessarily have to but it can be something for you guys out there that maybe uh, don't feel as confident to just jump in front of the camera straight away now I hope you uh, hope this helps you guys out if you are thinking about getting into tech reviewing because you know that's what I'm trying to do here. There's lots of room for all of us, so don't be too scared about that. And I always like seeing up and coming uh, tech channels that are really just trying and putting out there, and I like to give them shout outs and stuff like that. So um, yeah, go for it, guys, and uh, try your best. And I thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already because it makes Teddy very happy. And I'll see you guys next time.